Mr. Speaker. Um, permit me to make a quick departure from addressing the motion on the floor by first um, expressing my condolences to the Karu family in Babono who lost a treasured son of theirs through a tragedy as he was undertaking his work at the Sky Ride, a 29 year old um, known as Daniel Prince Karu. And it was a very sad moment for the people of Babono as well as the Karu family. I want to take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to congratulate all teachers this week. This is Teachers Week. Well, Minister of Education is not here, so I'm putting a little plug for him. And on Thursday is World Teachers Day. That is the 5th of October. And I think it is important, and we know this government and its sensitivity to education, that we cannot um, miss out that very important period. And we have the public sectors having their, their day. So all government employees are lined up to get their congratulatory messages from this government. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the motion presented by the Honorable Prime Minister, where he seeks to borrow nine million 971,000 US dollars to support our officers in the protective services, and in that case, the fire service. Mr. Speaker, this government, under the leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister, who is very good at listening to the voices around him. And sometimes when you believe he has not heard, it's only when he repeats it you realize that he actually heard what was said. This government, Mr. Speaker, is very systematic, very organized, and very strategic in the way it operates. And many times the Prime Minister surprises us cabinet officers, uh, cabinet members when he decides on certain areas that he pulls under his watch. Mr. Speaker, when I was appointed as Minister for the Public Service, Home Affairs, Labor and Gender Affairs, the argument was that I think Home Affairs was the one that I had least experience and knowledge of. But Mr. Speaker, what is important about learning is to feel it, smell it, and see it to see what it is. And Mr. Speaker, on assuming the responsibility for home affairs, I have visited mostly every police station on the island, every fire station on the island, I have visited Bordelais six times. Yes. <laughs> I will stay there one of these days. <laughs> I have visited the Marine Unit many times, probation and parole. So when you get on the ground, Mr. Speaker, you understand it. You feel it. You smell it. You touch it so you know exactly what it is. And I want to, I'm smiling at this motion on the floor because I'm smiling because I know the former fire chief, Mr. Joseph Joseph, who has since retired, will be happy in his retirement seeing that the prime minister is coming through with many of the requests that was made even during his time. But Mr. Speaker, there is one thing I want to share with you about the fire service, and that is the succession plan that is in that department. 
the number of persons that are lined up to assume leadership, there isn't a shortage of leaders in the fire service, Mr. Speaker. And I want to welcome the fire officers, the acting chief, and the other officers present in the house today. And that is a demonstration of the seriousness with which they take their work. That even when the prime minister is borrowing some money to implement the work that they have to do, they find the time to come and sit in this house to follow the discussion. I need to commend the officers for that. Mr. Speaker, I am due to visit the Babono Fire Station and the Babono Police Station on Thursday this week. That's World Teachers Day. And I think we are supposed to wear present. We are supposed to be in our school uniform. So I hope I find time to visit the Babono Primary School. That's my alma mater. Thursday, 5th of October, that's World Teachers Day. And I will be visiting the Babono Fire Station and the Babono Police Station. And I hope my presence in my uniform will inspire the students at the Babono Primary School because the sky is the limit. <laughs> and Mr. Speaker, the fire service all of us knew how valuable that, that department was, not just for combating fire, but the way they took on COVID-19, Mr. Speaker, and I have said it before in this house, that people thought St. Lucia was New York. When they heard ambulances going in all nook and cranny in St. Lucia to collect and pick up people there was a gentleman who was very sick. He was so huge. Our emergency medical technicians could not lift him up. So they had to get, Mr. Speaker, the, the equipment that the uh, elect, Lucy Elect uses to, to hoist him out of his house and brought him into the ambulance. Yes, they couldn't lift him. They couldn't carry him on the stretcher. So they had to get this crane to go into the house, get the gentleman in it, and then brought him in to the ambulance. That is the nature of the work of the fire service and our emergency medical technician. To see the areas where they have to go in to collect persons who are sick, when they have accidents, they are the right hand for the police. And Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Prime Minister for assisting the police in getting equipment. Because one of the issues that the fire officers have raised is that when there is an accident, the fire officers, the emergency medical technicians are there before the police. And the police says they do not have transport and therefore they should not tamper the fire officers and the emergency should not tamper with the evidence before the police arrive. So you find that if once the police is fully equipped they have to be there even before the fire officers and the emergency officers to collect their evidence before anybody tampers with it. So I'm happy that now we are seeing a marriage of the two, where government is giving support to the police so they have their vehicles to be there on time, even before the, the ambulance arrives, so that they can collect the evidence and then rush the person for rescue or even save a life. Mr. Speaker, $7 million will go towards equipment. And Mr. Speaker, when I visited the, the fire headquarters in Castries, and they took me on a tour, I saw some beautiful equipment there. 
painted logo with red, all in red. And what the fire chief told me was that these equipment were not designed for the St. Lucian terrain. Many of them were donated to St. Lucia, but they could not navigate in our terrain. They were built for another environment. Some of them are very old, and they required a lot of repairs and a lot of work to be done. But with this loan, Mr. Speaker, the government is investing in getting equipment that is conducive to our environment. They will be brand new, and the fire officers will be able to navigate in the environment a lot better to carry out their, their duties. So I want to thank the Prime Minister for making that commitment and living up to the expectations of the officers by giving them the equipment that they need for them to carry out their duties. Mr. Speaker, firefighting, as has been articulated earlier, is not an easy task. And I actually visited the fire training school in Viewfort. And at the time, they had the fire drill. And you could imagine the distance where I was standing and to feel the heat that they were trying to put out. And the fire officers were clothed with their proper equipment. And they were actually in the flame trying to out the fire. And we were how many hundred yards away? standing and we could feel that heat so we know the pressures that our officers go through in carrying out their duties mr speaker the the fire service as i said in recent times they receive a toyota coaster from usa nemo through nemo they receive an ambulance from the french government and Mr. Speaker, you would have known that in the past, our protective services, especially the police, we used to hear of some ball or some fundraising activities. And Mr. Speaker, I don't know how many fundraising activities we would have had for us to supply the officers with the equipment and the tools that they need to carry out their duties. This government is committed to national security, to protecting the St. Lucians. And as a result, we are investing in that, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I do not want to guarantee you what the Prime Minister did not guarantee you, but I'm very confident that this money will find its way in the Consolidated Fund. It will find its way not on an aircraft to Panama. <laughs> and it will be used for the purpose that we borrowed it, Mr. Speaker. I'm very confident about that. Right. So when we borrow, we have to pay back and we must account for it. We cannot put it on any aircraft that is heading to Panama, Mr. Speaker. We need it to change the operations, the quality of life for St. Lucians. We need to ensure that the funds that are borrowed, which this government is committed to, will be used for the purpose, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have installed CCTV camera in some of the fire stations. <coughs> We have done repairs in a number of fire stations. We have recruited about 40 new fire fighters, Mr. Speaker. Now we are reviewing the legislation, the Fire Service Act, and the regulations to improve certain areas of operations in the fire service. And now, we have hired a legal consultant who will work with the 
Department of Home Affairs to review a lot of the old legislations that have outlived their usefulness to modernize the protective services, including the police, the fire service, borderly, probation and parole, and the marine unit. This is what this government is about, to raise the bar, to improve what we do. Mr. Speaker, I am very pleased that as we sit here, as we gather here, we are showing that this government is making every effort, every effort to improve the conditions on which the public officers work. We have also worked, Mr. Speaker, on benchmark qualification for the protective services. And that is in keeping with the nature of the work that the protective services are doing. We are seeing a trend, Mr. Speaker, where the protective services were treated like ordinary public officers. But what we realize is that these officers need special skills. And this government, under the leadership of the Prime Minister, has invested heavily in training. Whether it's the police, whether it's fire service, whether it's borderly, probation and parole, marine unit, just name it, Mr. Speaker. And they get training not just at the local level, they also get training at the regional and international level. That is what we call commitment. That is what we call visionary. And in that vein, our officers are benefiting from all this training. Mr. Speaker, you heard the Prime Minister spoke about the training school in Viewfort. And here we will see an amalgamation of all the protective services. So we'll not have a training school for police, one for fire, one for this, one comprehensive institution that would be able to accommodate all the protective services. That is a master, a master move, Mr. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Honorable Prime Minister for his commitment, his passion for the protective services for national security and ensuring that our St. Lucian people live in a safe environment. And we have seen a number of areas, Mr. Speaker, at some point, maybe I will get a chance to go through all of them. But when you look at them, when you examine them, you can see that this government, under the leadership of this Prime Minister, is investing heavily in the Department of Home Affairs and National Security to ensure that we enjoy an environment that is protect productive, we create an environment that is safe for all the persons in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I know the fire officers are happy that they will be getting that support. But there is also another area they have on the table, and the Prime Minister is already looking at it, where he put an allocation in, the, in this budget, this year's budget, to start some feasibility and preliminary work on finding a location for the headquarters for the fire service. And in the same vein, a similar approach is done for the police. And Mr. Speaker, you would have been driving by, but when you enter the fire service headquarters, it was supposed to be a temporary arrangement. But as the years go by, it's already becoming permanent. And this is an area that is prone to flooding. I heard my colleague, Minister for Castries Central, said he has cut the flooding by half. 
<laughs> by three quarters. Flooding and zero flood. Okay. All right. So, but they they have been experiencing some flooding, and you know they are next to the river. That when we have heavy rains, that water goes in to the headquarters. So the prime minister is committed. And he has already made a commitment by starting the preliminary works. So let us hope that in time we will see the fire officers getting their new fire headquarters. Mr. Speaker, at this point, we have no choice but to give the Prime Minister the assurance that the Department of Home Affairs will implement this project in a timely manner so that we give the services that are intended for the officers to carry out their duties. And with that, Mr. Speaker, I stand in full support of the motion presented by the Prime Minister in borrowing 9 million 971,000 US dollars to improve the conditions on which the fire service and the officers work. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.